Assalamu alaikum to some of you. Peace out to the rest of you. You know who it is, what I'm going to ask you to do and why I'm going to ask you to do it. So I'm going to talk quickly because I'm on my way to my class right now. I just listened to Jay Shine's video. Jay Shine, bruh, you are actually, assalamu alaikum, you are actually very poignant and very uh, um, relevant in one context, but not right now. What you're talking about right now uh, is not, I put it like this, you're ahead of your time. So you're talking about the issue of us not staying in the community and building something for the kids, and for the grandkids, and uh, I get it. Because in all honesty, as a sane man, I would want to do the same thing. I mean, I would want, uh, I would have the same concern. What are we gonna do for the babies? As a father myself, I want to know what we're gonna do for the babies. My son is 18. My son was, 17, no, sorry. He was 16. Sorry about that, y'all. That's an interruption. I keep getting interrupted every time. And uh, boy, that student there is so bad at English, he really shouldn't have been in the university. So anyway, uh, to make a long story short, uh, Jay Shine, you are uh, relevant about the wrong time. And that is to see my son was 16 and he said to me, Pop, uh, I wanna leave the country like you. He was in high school at the time. He said to me, speaking of which, I'm looking at one of my students that looks just like him. Lord have mercy. All right, you go ahead, go first, I'm coming up. Good to see you again. So uh, he said to me he wanted to leave, and he said that the reason why was that he was seeing that in high school, the kids, he said, I can't imagine kids being evil anywhere else, any more evil than where they are where I'm going to school. Every time something's wrong, they think it's cool. As soon as it's bad, it's cool. As soon as it's good, they think it's not cool anymore. And uh, he told me, he asked me, do your students think this way? And I told him, well, I'm teaching university, but they are fresh out of high school. They do have that to a certain extent, but there's no violence. Not at this age, not when I get them. And he told me, okay. Um, now, I found out that the high schools here are pretty bad, but by the same token, and I found it from students from these high schools. But at the end of the day, um, what I found out was that my son would have a much better shot. If not here in this particular country, he would have a much better shot in many other nations. And I, as a Muslim who is also black, have different nations to which I could go and settle. I'm not going to say their names because I'm not going to ruin the secrets. But that's just it. See, we do have the option to go certain places, and I'm not going to tell everybody where they are because I'm not going to ruin it. It's not the same for every individual, Jay Shine. However, keep this in mind. You did say that the real revolutionaries got neutralized all the time, every time, right? You're right, they did. They started. The U.S. government first went after Marcus Garvey before they went after anybody else, and that was the reason they even created the FBI to begin with. At first, it was just the attorney general's office, and Gay Edgar Hoover was the one going after him with his undercover black passing for white ass, right? Marcus Garvey was sold out by who? Not just regular niggas in the community, but people with whom he was working, other conscious black, black folk, you know, in that part of that whole back to Africa movement. They sold him out. Now, Marcus Garvey was so right that eventually his former enemy, W.E.B. Du Bois, agreed with him, took his advice, went back to Ghana, and lived out the rest of his days in Ghana, in the motherland. And to this day, Ghana's Africa's capital for repatriation of African Americans. To this day, I'm not saying we get citizenship, I'm just saying that's where the most African Americans wind up going. Salam alaikum, blood. So, you're right that we won't be able to run forever. I agree, the thing is this, you can run and you can take a fight to another location. Now, if a, if a Cisbem brother's trying to do that, I'm behind, behind him 100%. Go in and prevent the environment from becoming worse than what it is. That's what I'm doing over here while I am teaching English. You think I'm only over here teaching English as a second language? Bruh, I'm telling these folks about what the crackers really like, the cracker that they look up to, the cracker that they respect, the cracker that even forms some of their ancestry. I'm sitting up here telling them this while I'm teaching them English. I'm slipping it in. That's why I don't get put my name and my face on these channels, <laughs> on YouTube. The minute that gets out, somebody's going, some cyber vigilante back in the States is going to make a phone call to where I am right now get my Rakama revoked, because they do have power. But there's going to be a day when they can't do that, especially if what I'm saying, if my message gets around, there's going to come a day some white dude calls up the states, tries to get my uh, Rakama revoked. 
there will come a day when it's not going to happen no more. There's going to come a day when you, somebody white calls up and they're going to say, hold up, man, what are you talking about? And you know what? So goddamn what? We know who you are and what you're calling for. But I have to go through the steps like we all do. And that's what I'm getting at at this point. That's all I'm saying to you, bro. That's it. Yes, it is an issue. Now, there are laws that are about to be passed in Colombia that are going to change things for Colombians. And it's not to the favor of Colombian men. I am for men paying child support to the extent that they have to do it or other way or, or taking custody. I am for men being held to that responsibility like most of us are. I am a dad and I believe I'm responsible. However, they might be passing some laws that, uh, that are in the right direction, but they've gone too far in distance and for the wrong reasons. That's what's going on there in Colombia. So what I'm saying is that you are relevant, but in the future, when they start doing this stuff, because it is going to spread. Colombia just got ruined. It just got ruined. Definitely did. And without DNA testing, best believe a lot of them Colombian women are going to sit up here and start telling these uh, authorities, this guy over here is the father, even though he ain't. That's true. That's going to happen. But you sit up saying they hoes, they hoes, they hoes. All them hoes. Even in Germany, they hoes. They're hoes and they're non-hoes. It's different. I mean, what you got in the States is hoes. Now, I believe in marriage as a Muslim, but you telling brothers who ain't Muslim, because, hey, look, you don't necessarily, you even said there was a Muslim slave trade. Historically speaking, the only Muslim slave trade, I'm not saying Arab slave trade, that's different. I'm saying the only Muslim slave trade was actually of other Arabs and Europeans. Why? Because they were the only ones who fought Muslims. Africans never did. Other than the Berbers, nobody ever, no, no African ever went against the Muslims to fight them wholesale. They didn't do it. That's not what happened. So anyway, that's another talk for another time. But you understand where I'm getting with this. You are relevant in the future when these other nations' laws change. We are relevant right now to apply pressure if we are smart enough to do it. And we do. And, and I agree with you that we need to be smarter about doing this, applying pressure to prevent this problem. This is where we come in. You come in if it fails. But we're not wrong for doing what we're doing right now. We're going to a better location. You're telling us to be loyal to a community that does not deserve patience and you're telling us to be loyal and patient to women that don't deserve it. And I can't support that message. I hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.